What's up guys, thanks for clicking on the video. So I am not one that usually falls for like marketing, but I've seen so many Arby's commercials recently and an Arby's just opened up across the street that I finally gave in and we are trying Arby's. So I've never had Arby's before, and it better be good because there is a Chick-fil-A right next door, there's a Blaze Pizza, and there is a Chipotle all within the same vicinity. So I'm basically choosing Arby's all over all of those things. So I got two things here. I got the classic Arby's roast beef sandwich because I feel like if you're gonna try a place for the first time, you have to try like what they're known for. So we got the classic roast beef sandwich and then we also got the classic French dip sandwich. So it looks like the French dip comes with that uh, special sauce. So we are going to first try the roast beef sandwich. This isn't the like, head. they have like the one with like a lot of meat on it. I guess Arby's has the meat. This is just the uh, the regular classic. I didn't eat all the protein, so it's pretty nothing special. Let's try it. All right, so I mean, it's nothing special. It's just like a roast beef sandwich, obviously, but it's tasty. It has a good flavor to it. And surprisingly for like a fast food, it tastes like very healthy, like there's no added like butters, the bun seems fine, so. It seems like a relatively healthy option, honestly, for a fast food place. The meat tastes relatively lean, there's no, yeah, there's nothing added. I like this, this is actually pretty good. So, let me finish this one up and I'll uh, catch up to you with the French dip in a bit. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I actually really enjoyed that sandwich a lot, a lot more than I thought. It was very, like it didn't taste unhealthy at all. Uh, the meat was very lean, it was tasty. I liked it more than I thought. I'm a, I'm a simple guy, I don't like a lot of things added to it. So I would definitely get that again. And now it's the French dip sandwich. This looks good. So this one is not like a hero bun. There's Swiss cheese on it and roast beef. And it comes with this like sauce to dip it in. I guess it's called a French dip sandwich because like you take, you're probably supposed to take the sandwich and you're probably supposed to dip it. That's what my guess would be. So let's try it first without the dip. No, this is good too. This tastes exactly like the other one but with cheese on it. Let's dip it. Okay, this is amazing. The cheese, the roast beef, and the sauce. This is very good. So overall, Arby's, I give it like an eight and a half out of 10. I'm definitely gonna try it again. I'm pleasantly surprised. It's a little expensive, this whole thing, for both these things is like 10, over 10 bucks. So not the cheapest fast food, I guess, but definitely recommend it. So I'm gonna eat this. Then I'm gonna have Halo Top. Probably not gonna show it to you guys because I don't wanna put Halo Top in in every video, even though I don't think it was in the last video. But after this, I think what I'm gonna show you guys is the current supplements that I use because I get that question a lot. So I'll eat this, show you my supplements, and then I'll show you my latest workout. All right guys, so I always get asked what supplements I use. So I'm gonna go over an updated list of the supplements that I use. Just to get this out of the way first, I am using mostly universal supplements. The video is not sponsored by Universal, but I am sponsored by Universal. That's why if they carry something that I happen to use, I will obviously use their brand product. Um, just so you guys know, there's no supplement that you need to use. This is just what I happen to use, and I will go over everything that I use and why. I broke it down to three categories. We have just like overall health supplements, we have protein, and then we just have like performance stuff. So. Let's start with the health stuff. So I take vitamin C, I take vitamin D, and I, and I take a multivitamin. That's basically just for like overall health and just, just to be healthy for my immune system. No other reason than that. I also take a joint support supplement just to make sure that my joints are okay from like squatting heavy, just to be safe. Um, I recently started taking this ashwanda. Um, it's basically an herb. It has really good feedback from people for mood and like overall just well-being. So it's cheap enough. I started taking that. And I also take ZMA. I take that before bed. Um, I find it helps me sleep a little bit better. Overall, not a huge effect. 
Um, if I had to um, suggest any of these, I would just say take a multi, take some vitamin C and vitamin D to make sure your immune system is good, uh, but nothing too crazy there. Um, moving on to protein. Um, so we have a casein protein, a whey protein, and an egg protein. What's the difference? Well, whey protein typically gets absorbed faster. Casein gets absorbed slower. Um, egg is somewhere in between. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you use for the most part. I mean, if you're going to be taking a protein shake in the morning or after a workout, you are going to probably want to use either the whey or the egg because it's faster absorbing. If you are going to have it later at night before bed, I guess it makes sense to have casein because it is slower absorbing. Uh, I typically like to mix them together because it, the casein is thicker, the whey is thinner. You put them together and it makes a nice consistency. That's honestly the reason that I do it. Um, if you have any digestion issues with whey protein, egg is a good alternative. Um, that's really what I got it for. I haven't actually um, used egg in the past, but I decided to try it out. I always kind of thought egg, ew, egg protein is going to taste like egg, but it, it doesn't taste like eggs. It's chocolate flavor like everything else. So if you have any issues with dairy, um, this is dairy free. You could use the egg protein. Um, moving on to performance stuff. So we got creatine monohydrate and amino acids. Creatine, I love creatine. It's the most uh, heavily researched supplement. Um, it really uh, does definitely give you a little bit of a boost with some strength gains in the gym. Five grams a day, every day, it doesn't matter when you take it. Um, it's cheap enough, so I definitely recommend taking it if you're really over 18. If you're not over 18, I probably wait a little bit. Um, amino acids, you don't need to take amino acids, especially if you're in a caloric surplus, you're eating enough protein and you're really like, bulking. I only recommend amino acids for someone who is either cutting, it could help with preserving muscle. Uh, if you train in the gym fasted, it's a good idea to take them. And it's also a good idea sometimes to take it before cardio. Uh, if you work out and then do cardio, you could drink it in between. But overall, like I said, you don't need to use any of these. I personally like to use protein more as a food source than a supplement. It does help me get my protein and I do creative things with it to eat it. Um, the health stuff, like I said, nothing crazy. I just want to be healthy. Uh, if you're sick all the time, you can't work out, so that's no good. And that's really all I use. You'll notice that I don't take a pre-workout. The reason I don't take a pre-workout is because it has caffeine in it and I drink coffee and soda throughout the day. So I prefer to save my caffeine for that. Um, otherwise, that's it. I mean, it kind of looks like a lot when you lay it out like this, but it really is not a lot. These three, it's just really one, just protein. This is just creatine and um, amino, creatine and amino acids and health stuff. So I don't do anything crazy, no testosterone boosters, no fat burners. No what is going workout. on, everyone? Welcome to the no workout. Carbs, so no here less. is my latest um, upper yeah, strength day. Uh, I'm going to take you through the workout, so explain how many sets, out. reps I do for yeah, everything. Because a ton of people have been messaging me like on Instagram asking me my current workout routine, how I split up my body parts, how many sets and reps I do. And also, I'll always, on my story on Instagram, I put like a few clips from my workouts, and I don't show everything there. I show like two or three exercises, and people are under the impression that those two or three exercises is everything that I do, um, which it's not. But here in this workout, you will see everything that I do. Not every set, but like I said, I'll tell you what I do. So, First, you saw bench press. I did four sets of four this week. It's 225 pounds, and in between each set of the bench press, I did superset that with pull-ups. On the pull-ups, I did five sets, so one extra set on pull-ups and bench press. On the pull-ups, I did the first three sets. I did six reps. I had 45 pounds attached to me, and then on the after those three sets, I lowered the weight attached to me to 35 pounds. I did two sets of eight, so three sets of six, then I did two sets of eight. And on the second set of eight, I dropped off the dumbbell here and I did a drop set. Um, since this is my upper strength day, all the reps for the most part are somewhere between four and eight. Um, on some of the isolation exercise at the end, I do go up to like 10 reps. But for the most part, I save the higher reps for my hypertrophy week, uh, hypertrophy workout later in the week. This is more geared towards strength, so the main compounds I stick more to the four to six rep range. Um, the lesser compound, I would say like a pull up, I wouldn't call it like a, like a heavy, heavy lift, that's why I do six to eight reps. Uh, and then, like when you see later on with like curls and lateral raises, I do a little uh, more reps. 
Um, after that, I did some overhead presses. Here, this is 135 pounds. I did four sets of four, same as the bench press. Uh, you'll notice the weight on here and the bench press, it's not exactly, uh, it wasn't too difficult for me. I definitely could handle more, but my approach is to start lighter, increase slowly rather than start at my max and burn out too, uh, too quickly. I did superset the overhead presses with these pendulum rows. Here I did 205 pounds for uh, three sets of eight. So I did three sets on the pendulum rows, four sets on the overhead press. Um, my goal on these uh, pendulum rows is really to get my form better. I always feel like I start increasing the weight and I start uh, cheating a bit. So I'm trying to keep my form better before I increase the weight. Um, and like I said, when I say a superset, it's not like I'm rushing in between each. I'll basically do a set on overhead press, wait like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and then do my set. Um, after those, I moved on to my favorite machine in the gym, this incline chest press machine. I did three sets of eight on this. And yeah, this is my favorite machine. I wish every gym had it. Unfortunately, they don't. It's kind of like a dumbbell um, press, only better. Uh, I did superset that with these cable curls, three sets on this as well. Uh, it was three sets of eight on here, yeah, yeah, three sets of eight on this, three sets of eight on the chest press machine. Um, like I said, uh, since this is more like an isolation, I don't think it's necessary to go like four reps on it. Uh, but I do save the higher rep, like 10 and above, for my later workout in the week. Um, here, this is a different superset. I started with tricep press downs and I superset that with lateral raises. Here are the eight reps. Lateral raises though, I do believe I did on uh, 10 reps. Just because I only do um, one medial delt or uh, exercise per week, each of these, so I figure I want to get a little bit more uh, reps than just the eight. Plus I feel like my phone is bad on eight, but that's the whole workout. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Subscribe if you have not yet. Thanks for watching the video guys and I will see you in the next one.